now i want to invest in india's india's best i think this opportunity is not going to come back you if you have the right eye for it if you can make meaning out of chaos that's that's the word which i love the most whether you're a global investor indian india is a place to be so hi in our next episode we have rahul agarwal who has like a profound experience within the domain of finance so he has like spent around 5 to 6 years within the private sector and then he jumped on to the public sector so in private sector he was working as a equity derivatives analyst within bank of america and then he's, he was also in the founding team member of the invest india so let's demystify his career trajectory and let's see what does he has to offer so hi rahul how are you hi i'm very well thanks for inviting me never done a podcast before so i'm uh, a bit nervous but you know hoping that it's going to be exciting yeah so there's so much to learn from you so there's a, like a very uh, how do i know rahul i i did a summer internship with him recently so he's like my boss uh, but i am very grateful that he is with us today so uh, rahul let's go to your childhood and let's start from your childhood where you grown up and how did you get into the world of finance and then let's take it forward sure thanks for that question i don't know how i went in the world of finance though uh let's talk about a childhood because <clears throat> that's something which uh, uh you know <laughs> is clear one i am a i'm a delhi boy uh, and within delhi i'm a mehrol i'm from mehroli mm-hmm. you know a uh, lot of people who are even mehroli don't know mehroli is actually one of the earliest capitals of delhi Mm. so the mamluk dynasty came from there mm. uh and uh, baba banda singh mm. uh, you know we've heard that story i think many of us and and many don't know ab- about him especially until when the bridge came in in his name mm. he was executed in mehroli mm. so that's the place where i come from uh very fact, sacred place for for us it's sacred for you and it uh, and baba banda singh bahadur's name there is a memorial school there Mm. uh where i went where mm. i learned uh, you know my my initial years were there my base comes from there mm. so until class 5th i was there mm. uh a phenomenal story actually i i, I you know I, i honestly believe that uh, you know any person any individual 80% of what a person is comes from the environment and 20% come from education and uh, you know i feel my childhood gave me that uh coming in from that place uh you know very interesting place i we used to live in anaj mandi you know okay. people who know about it uh, uh you know can appreciate that you know there is so much trade which happens there every day mm. uh it's chaotic but it's so much money exchanging hands and if you can observe and learn it's phenomenal if you don't then there is nothing for you mm. so that's that was my initial years proper mehroli by boy used to love flying kites fighting for it and now you know honestly i can probably write a book the way a lot of uh, these fiction novels are written uh, to how i see my childhood but a very beautiful one i was from a very humble family uh, my father uh, my, though from an educated one but my father used to run uh, electrical uh, repair shop which was focused on you know which we used to repair fans and uh and motors and tube lights etc uh, i've done that myself that was mm-hmm. my childhood so used to go there diwali mm-hmm. lights was the most important thing used to repair those diwali lights and used to fancy uh my future there and let me tell you a very interesting story you know when i used to go there and that happens to all boys who sit you know who go to their shops people will come there and say okay you know you are making your kid you're training your kid mm Uh, to be you know to be there and his future is secure because you can he can also repair shop you know fans and motors and have you know have a, has a secure future so that's mm. you know that those are my beginnings uh not you know from there i you know in class 6 of you my dad wanted me to move out you know the, the thing about both my parents who they were visionary they wanted the kids to do better and that's like most parents you know what they wanted uh despite and resources were limited so no private school so i went to navik school in sarojini nagar uh a phenomenal journey then started people from you know if you come from humble backgrounds uh it's very difficult for you to adjust into new environments mm. you know and 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 that story was that story was true for me as well 
for five years you know all the way from you know when when i started there from class 6 to 10 i was only fighting and i didn't know how to adjust uh, how to make friends uh, how to how to really learn uh, that made me observant so i became very good observant there i feel and and i really call them my uh, building blocks mm. the years which built me Hmm. very silent didn't do well in my education my academics etc but there was a turning point you know uh, somewhere in class 10 which happens to a lot of us very similar story for me hmm. uh, the turning point happened when i started to appreciate and started to get some clarity of uh, education how it can ch- change my life hmm. uh, but you know honestly tell you i'll tell you a very interesting one there you know when you're in mehroli right uh, or a place like that you have to you know you have to go through a lot so especially if you're a if you're a kid who can be uh, who can be haggled around easily you can be pushed around easily and i was that kid so you know we used to take this so, so my school was in sarojini nagar my we used to go from mehroli so and this was the time when under dtc so there was no there were actually under dtc buses used to run in delhi and and you know from that then they shut it down and then blue lines came in and that travel from mehroli to sarojini nagar there was a challenge every day every day mm. so you okay. know let me tell you very very interesting stuff sorry for the long answer no problem but you know there used to be the school in between i'll not name it but these kids were pretty interesting so we were you know we used to go in the bus and suddenly because they had some issue with the you know the bus driver or somebody hmm. suddenly all the glasses the windows were bro- getting broken so they were, they were hitting at the b- doors uh, all the windows and they're all broken and you were in the bus okay. and that was the reality right that's how you know You're that's how i have grown up yeah uh, so 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 i think essentially you know that's that's what has happened to me and thereafter it's you know uh, you know it's it's just about being pushed around and there is one concept which i want to share and which i really truly believe in hmm. i think you know what we are trying to do with you know especially you know my friends my cousins i'm sure yours too uh we are trying to give an extra protective environment to our kids hmm. what it does is it it actually destroys their ability or does not allow to build their ability hmm. to to survive in every any circumstance very true very true right we we have we've grown up in india so when i grew up you know every bus every seat you know it was written that lavaris vastu bambo sakti hai today we live in a india where there is that statement is gone it's mm. nowhere there are cameras everywhere and smallest of issues become national issues i think it's the time to be not so protective mm. give them much more than what you could have mm. Mm. however we are saying other way around you know we are making them protective you know when we were when i was young if i'm you know uh let me tell you one more story sorry <laughs> just too long you know when when i was you know when i was admitted in class 6th in navyog so mm-hmm. mehroli to navyog was about 14 kilometers so my father had a scooter so he took me to sarojini nagar school he, to navyog he dropped me there and then he also came back to pick me up and mm. i didn't know anyone from you know any friend anything no school bus was there so he came in the evening to pick me up as well i was you know so i didn't know what was happening he came he was standing outside so he mm. picked me mm. uh you know i was sitting behind he was sitting in front he took me to the bus stop on the scooter and i said okay the bus will come here he didn't tol- tell me which which number will come and he took me to a route and said it'll go there 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 and that's how you'll reach the mehroli mm. bus stop and that's it got it my mother got a little worried about it that this 6 you know this 11 year old never have ever done this travel alone hmm. will be a issue so he sent me with a boy who was in class 6 now as 12 class 12 boys do it he say, he told me that you know okay i'm going because i know your your my father knows your father so i'm going with you but you have to walk 12 20 steps behind me nobody <laughs> should know that you know class 6 boy is coming with me okay So okay I said okay let's mm. do that you know I have to go to the school mm. and you know so I went you know and th- all of that happened and you know when so while going it was okay but when I when we came back so he he he, man- he got van- he vanished you know, that's okay I found somebody you know I started asking people 
I found somebody who was actually going to Meroli. So <laughs> that was interesting one. So I went with them. Interestingly, my father told me to take the bus from the other side of where I should have <laughs> taken. <laughs> so that was my, you know, that's that's my journey. And then obviously, from there was no there was no looking back. And uh, you know, I I, I think I de- did decently well in my education. Uh, got into Delhi University, which was not very common for a lot of yeah, us. Yeah. And but yeah. So yeah. so you did your bachelor's from Shahid Bhagat Singh College. Okay. So uh, usually many many Delhiites do, and yes. I have also many friends. I did from HGS. Maybe you know. Yep. So uh, we all go through the commerce journey, and because it's like a very standard. Okay, you go to commerce, and then how did you figure out that I, now I want to get into say a finance mm-hmm. world? first and second then how did you made up a mind that i will do cfa frm or it all happened by any incident or something like that <laughs> no so actually you know I, I, it's a very interesting question and so true as well you know when i if i really go back i i had a good knack of understanding so you know my mom gave me newspaper when i was very young very young so i'm reading newspapers since maybe it was when i was 7 or 8 okay So my that and that mom That's my mom added point. that to me and and I don't know a single you read day. daily without fail. every day you know I I was selective initially so I will read the sports page right or I will read something else you know I was not reading on the first page in the sports page and maybe the last page it didn't matter to her whether I'm reading the Hindi newspaper or English newspaper honestly but I'm I'm reading right I'm grasping something so that made me slightly more aware kid yeah for sure right I was definitely. You know, Uh, by the time i was 10 you know i could or maybe even earlier i could discuss and this was 1996 right 9 i was 9 year old so i was born the, the world cup right yeah. the cricket world cup uh, my 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 numbers were phenomenal by then right i knew everything right i i remember the 136 sachin scored against sri lanka okay right so you know that that's really how you know and and when you are so when you start grasping things like that hmm. then numbers excite you far more hmm. and for, and and somehow i don't have the the artistic brain so so numbers was easy so i picked that up and and when i went to you know to college uh, you know i realized you know it's it's very natural for me to hmm. pick money right okay. so so and and make meaning out of every you know everything which is happening in money so uh, just a small question usually what happens you know when you are in that kind of atmosphere hmm. you in delhi idly people also go for ca so you like intentionally didn't to ca yes actually okay. i did and i i repented it also okay so my most of my class was ca right and everybody yeah. became a first so you know this is about good delhi university colleges right yeah, the selection people, criteria people, yeah. is so steep that you know everybody becomes a ca in their first attempt mostly second is also very rare i when i came out of you know my class 12 i was somebody offered offered me to start a tuition center right cbt like a tuition very okay. simple tuition center okay and i did it i did it it was phenomenally profitable i had about 70 kids and i was making money which i did not make in my first job okay <laughs> and when you were doing that then and you were teaching like we go on as finance i no no i was te- teaching school kids i was okay. the first year right so okay. who will i teach right 11 kids right okay. so i was Accounts, teaching commerce and yeah so uh, the first student <laughs> the first student i got uh, was was for 10th class maths okay uh, and he paid me 200 rupees uh, per month who that's what i started with but by the time the year ended i i was making more than 40000 a month back okay. in 2004 It's a very good the, amount of money yeah, at that time in, in your first year of college <clears throat> first year of college right yeah. now when you're making 40000 a month then doing the article ship for 2500 rupees <laughs> doesn't make sense doesn't make sense didn't make sense to me yeah right and then um, i think i i've taken a lot of drastic steps in life and and you'll notice when i'll speak a little more a lot of people were telling me you know you do this you'll get stuck to this right because you're making 40 you'll make 3 lakhs tomorrow It's not a big deal, right? Education people are crazy about, you know, that kind of struck me to me, and I said, no, this is no, this place cannot hold back, even if it's more money. So I I left it, you know, in middle. So I did it for two years, and I left it in middle and started working towards my MBA. So so you know, gave my cat, uh, got into college, whatever I could. The interesting part is I scored f- 
terrible in my english i my english was horrible it was so horrible that in class 12th when i was going for my mba okay okay you okay. know for cat like the for verb, the verbal or my speaking abilities okay. you know i could <laughs> so I, i let me tell you a very funny incident i gave a call center interview at one hmm. point many of us in my age not i'm sure not in yours give call center interviews that some was very really common at that time some yeah. for fun of it some for you know they really wanted to do it thank god i didn't crack anything <laughs> so i gave one call center interview and that was because of my english uh, this this uh, interviewer hr asked me how to make a dal you tell me again. tell this to me in english and i couldn't so actually i said usme chhok lagayenge acha so that i really used this word and and you know she laughed on me and she said you know you're very cute but just go away because you're not to be you'll not be selected and 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 my condition remained like that it didn't improve right so <laughs> whatever happens we are the same friends hmm. so but but uh, mba came right scored terribly in my quant but i was scored exceptionally well in my uh, i'm scored terribly in my uh, you know english and literature etc but scored amazingly well in my logic and quant hmm. right so my scores were good but you know if you don't score well in one you'll not get through good colleges and obviously like the top i believe no obviously that i believe so that didn't happen Hmm. and i didn't know how to speak in interviews i i had content right i had a lot of content hmm. but i did not have the communication uh, abilities and the fluency which b schools need hmm. so i had about 12 calls from top 20 colleges or top 30 colleges should not say top 20 hmm. and i just cleared one in waiting okay which is where i did my mba from lp hmm. so i was hmm. no, i was a beggar and that that only that one happened <laughs> okay so So yes, and then uh, MBA happened, uh, and and you started CFA simultaneously. I started CFA at the end of my MBA, so my when okay. my MBA was coming to close. So the main reason of not doing CA was that I was you were earning like more than what an like oh, a CA yeah. earns in his first salary at that time. Yes, okay, not the amazing. salary, but it's more about that three and a half years of articleship. Yeah, yeah uh, makes sense. I always believed I'm not patient, and I I think I still believe that I'm not patient to do it. Uh, you know, three and a half years of articleship, and my so, sister is a chartered accountant. In fact, okay. so I pushed her <laughs> to do this chartered accountancy because it's phenomenal thing. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. So, so we will come back to this afterwards. That you also have a like a stint in public sector, but at that time, didn't you uh, did, did you think about doing UPSC? No, because no. you were you were like able to read a newspaper. I didn't even know what is I. Okay. Or I didn't know what is because UPSC. you were like even read a newspaper and stuff. I think yeah, but but newspapers at that time did not speak about IS offices. Okay. okay, or it didn't matter, right? So this is this is ninety six and two thousand one okay. that period, or maybe two thousand four. It was more about elections. I was very I knew every seat. I knew numbers where votes are getting casted, and and you know what Congress thinks and what BJP thinks, and and so many other things. Because you you were like a avid reader. I was a avid reader. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So that like that made me think that why didn't you go for IS? But that's okay. Let's talk about your now getting to your working background. So you started your first job, I think, Ruler Electrification Corporation. That was my inter- internship. Your internship. Yes. So do you want to start from there? Do you want to start from Bank of America? Then we can take it forward. No, we can we can start from Ruler Electrification okay. Corporation. Okay. Let's start from there. Uh, But let me tell you one more story before that. Sorry, okay. because it's getting a little exciting. So when when LBS happened to me, so I told my parents and my grandparents. So grandparents, you know, we've lived. I've always lived in a joint family. Even today, I you know, it's a little little disintegrated in fashion. But my sister lives in the next apartment in the next tower and not in the same one. But it's still a joint family. I love. To, that's great. That's great. I love to, as I said, ecosystem learning, and that's what I'm yeah, trying yeah, to give yeah. to my kid as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh so when that happened when the waiting happened i told my parents and grandparents you know let's leave it let's chuck it i want to prepare for one more year i can i know i can resolve it and i can score far far better because my preparatory exams were i was i was in top 15 in delhi so i said i can it didn't happen this time that well i'll do it again and i'll clear clear it but they somehow thought you know ye to kar hi lo matlab matlab ye nahi hoga aise ye bol hi raha hai ye mila ye to kar le nahi to pata chala agle saal ye bhi na ho acha That really happened. That really happened, and I'm okay. <laughs> like, okay. no, okay, okay, no one wants to believe. Okay, and they pushed, so I did it. Well, next year, I did. I did give the cat, but once you are in, in doing something, huh. then you can't be in two boats. So I, I was doing LBS hmm. so passionately that, that I didn't as in. So I scored exceptionally well in my cat, far more than what I did earlier. Hmm. But in fact, 
Yeah. Yeah. Like basically, you gave the second chance. Chance, but didn't didn't take it seriously. I didn't apply from court colleges, etc. I maybe would have improved significantly in rankings, but didn't do it. Hmm. REC happened. I'll quickly tell you about it, right? I I go I I it's a it's a phenomenal institution. I know they do. Yeah. You know, it's a massive uh, book. If, like getting in IRC is not easy. No, that was not the case. Sorry. <laughs> so my <laughs> college called and said, okay, we have two bright kids who know finance. Can you take two of them? They said, okay, send them. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the REC internship story. Nothing brighter than that. Okay. <laughs> that happened, and I worked in the international finance division of REC. Okay. And I don't think in the history of REC. Uh, anybody so what we what i did there was my project was very interesting i developed a uh, a model through which you can actually calculate so if you borrow in foreign currency hmm. what will be the cost in indian currency in hedging it's compulsory to hedge for a psus in india it's compulsory to hedge all the exposure hmm. and they didn't know right if you don't know how do you find where is the cheapest source of funds hmm. that's the project which i did i created i did it i delivered it okay uh and, so interesting. and that built my my understanding to do more finance i understood finance hmm. but my you know that motivation to do more hmm. came from that rc okay i so i graduated in 2009 hmm. and we used to have campus placements in starting october and how was the situation at that because you were like the post recovery no from this yet to happen yet to happen no so see our my our previous batch was you know they got i they got the best offers okay. and and lbs has a good hiring track record got it so people were getting two job offers three job offers and then september of 2008 happened so previous batch got hired in a year earlier hmm. so we were getting hired in october of 2008 got it so october of 2008 the depression happened gfc nobody's coming <laughs> okay so it was a mayhem but i didn't know that so we knew gfc has happened i knew the story etc but i didn't knew the so you know when you're a student you don't know the impact of a crisis it's okay yeah. markets are melting down meri job pe kya hoga we were we were that 22 yeah. year old 20 not even 20 21 yeah so i was the youngest in my batch by the way okay so so but interestingly the first company on the campus was bank of america it okay. wasn't bank of america merrill by then because okay. merrill thing happened one week later okay okay so that's interesting <laughs> okay so they came in and i they hired one person yeah right and i was that one person team leader ha huh? team leader it was a young leaders program okay so they didn't hire a team so they come for a program which is hmm. a management associate kind of program and then they rotate you in different hmm. roles hmm so i started there hmm. uh so <laughs> and i thought no this is no and i told my you know the camp the placement coordinator that you know don't give me this uh, allow me to leave it because next day dishaw was coming okay and i was 100% sure i'm going to get dishaw and dishaw used to pay double the bank of america salary hmm. but bank of america was coming for the first time in the campus hmm. so first time on the campus they hired the youngest one he said no you can't leave it and they will yeah, not come again because of the repo the reputation so he didn't allow me to sit on it okay anyways forget forget about that so i joined bank of america uh, that was the time i so once i got hired then i thought you know i have to upskill myself so cfa came in so i gave my level 1 in december cleared that i gave my level 2 in june of the same year cleared that and then when i joined bank of america so after that i joined bank of america so i had prepared joined bank of america in may and june i gave my exams so i took one day break and i did in december of the same year i gave my frm 1 and 2 okay i cleared that so i was in the so my first role in bank of america was in in and in for integration of bank of america and merrill lynch okay so interestingly bank of america is a fixed income shop hmm. and merrill was a equity and equity derivatives shop hmm. super sexy stuff hmm. when i went to hyderabad hyderabad was bank of america's first so they sent me to hyderabad okay go enjoy there when i went there it was a team of they had some 2 3000 people big of you know lot of people there everybody was scared equities derivatives who would do that so they they caught me and said okay you do one thing you train everyone on equities and derivatives 22 year old i i let's let's do it i did it so they you know senior avps and it was really very very senior position for them and he joined just like how many months back one month one month one back. month of okay. orientation okay. and then i'm training those guys 
what is equity what okay. is derivative because you had the cfa options, and... options strategy i don't know what i had okay. but at 22 year old <laughs> i didn't know but only two one level what not okay. even two okay that okay let's let's start so we did that yeah. whatever happened they said okay there is this uh reference data project which uh, of merrill which is with genpack we need to bring it back hmm. the uh, the relations were not the best let's not speak about it and said you go there and i had the most horrible next 6 months so i had a team which used to start at 10 o'clock in the morning and end so the, there was a cycle right so they were used to cover f- all the way until next day 6 am so 20 okay. hours 20 so hours. i had 28 people reporting into me and i was still the youngest okay <laughs> right so so that happened and it was a very brutal environment because genpack guys were losing the jobs hmm. very brutal right automatically whatever that happened beautifully well and when it was when it happened i told uh, my managers you wanted me to do this i've done it now i want to do what i like okay i want to be doing equity derivatives finance markets so let's talk about what is equity derivatives and what was your role and what's like general sure <laughs> so I, so i i used to define that far far better a few years back but now so derivative is nothing but a product or or an asset class which derives its value from an underlying right derivative so it derives its value from something else hmm. derivatives are various kinds some which we know right futures options right futures is nothing but so there's an underlying asset Hmm. it's deriving its value and future essentially is a contract that you know i will either sell or buy this bottle of water to hmm. you in one month hmm. at so at a price defined or, or even if the yeah so at a at a defined price hmm. now if the so if the underlying the price of this bottle increases and i am the one who's selling hmm. at a fixed price and i'm losing hmm. because 30 minutes 30 days later i have to buy it from market hmm. and give it to you right so that's futures but derivatives keeps getting complicated right today in the world there are pipeline derivatives mm. uh, and there are credit default swaps which a lot of people know about and 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 you know you can pretty much create credit derivative for anything you can create a derivative on me also right so there can be a derivative on my income it depends how you want to think about it right and in fact you know if you when you trade uh, so you, you can have for instance ronaldo right today it's very easy to create a derivative on him how many goals he'll score as well no no probably not no not that but anyways so that's mm-hmm. equity derivatives i used to work on volatility that's the concept so volatility is an option as a concept in options so you know so vol goes up within volatility implied volatility sorry i'm just getting too technical no 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 it's Im- okay we can implied volatility is a is a estimation of volatility by the market Hmm. of what will be the volatility at the expiry of this option okay right so and generally when people are fearful for instance what's happening what happened in the market yesterday you know implied volatilities will shoot up hmm. and when you know people are not fearful so why why will shoot up because people are then looking for protection hmm. right so generally when markets fall volatilities go up Hmm. it should happen both ways right as mo- all of us believe standard deviation is volatility hmm. right but implied volatility is a different concept hmm. implied volatility is estimation of people that what will be volatile and people always think for the worst hmm. than they're thinking about volatility so my job was volatility hmm. interesting part is when when i was that in that role equity derivatives there are derivatives of anything so i'll not do i'll not only do uh, equity derivatives I'll do commodity derivatives. Vol happens there also. Mm. Currency derivatives, right? Interest rate derivatives, mm. credit default swaps. So it's actually working on everything. Mm. That gave me a world view. So every day, for four regions, to start we used to start our day with EU, EMEA, then followed by US, then Asia, and then for India. We used to create four ideas every day, and this can be anything. so that was my job that gave me i think that really made me or allowed me to think the way i think today hmm. right in fact you know i, I remember that this formative years formative years for my economics to come up hmm. i was good in economics but my real global understanding of how things are moving hmm. how one will impact the other came in from there april of 
we used to make charts and ideas and we used to write commentaries in april of 2011 i made a chart where volatility was at as its at its lowest okay so wix was at its lowest so let me introduce that concept to you so wix is nothing but average implied volatility for one two and three months options hmm so it was at its lowest means markets were at its highest what i noticed so so i was actually i, I can't show you the chart but and I, but i and i don't even have it but i pre- created a scatter plot of it hmm. right and put put uh, volatility on the uh, x axis and 12 minus 2 month volatility which is spread of volatility hmm. with long term so long term volatility minus short term volatility spread on the y axis that point was steepest ever so if i if i you know so ideally if, if it's left most it's hmm. the lowest but if it's the, the spread is high then it's the top most got which, it which essentially meant that something is going to happen at 12 month period and i, and I don't know hmm and not, there's nothing in the market it was a warning it was a massive warning you know what happened post that the european debt crisis okay and the markets went down crazy People, so you mentioned in your commentary no i didn't know it will happen okay. i knew that something is going to happen okay okay so you predicted that so i i said look for it i don't know what's happening but and that that chart was turning point no it actually allowed me to believe that i can uh i can actually play this game so you you basically you were discovering before that and then exactly yeah. so i was i discovered a, a pattern a theme yeah which was economics and and you know what followed that mm. uh, i don't know if it's in our 12 years but but greece mm. and and ireland and mm. iceland and even france was downgraded and mm. lot of people thought maybe even they will default mm. so and and you will break up because germany will not fit the bill for everyone that was mm. the time Hmm. And and I was I was I was super happy and I and you know I I actually thought I'll make a lot of money out of it, <laughs> but that didn't happen because research roles are not, uh, you know, are not like that, hmm. and that made me quit. Bank of America. Okay, got it. So after Bank of America, uh, you so when you're in MBA college, sorry, hmm. when you're in MBA college, you think that you go you want to go to an investment bank. Right, and you know these are these are not proper investment banks, but that's how we used to believe. All in all, you start with equity, and then you move to investment bank, and then like front end. It's not about front end actually. You know, when you're an MBA student, I don't think people think what is front end or what is back. Okay. They just think okay, okay J P Morgan, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Lehman Brothers. Hmm. They all do research. Okay. Most of us. <laughs> hmm. So it it comes later in life hmm. that you know you actually go to front end. Some of them do go to front end. Hmm. I'm not saying that, but bulk of jobs, Indian jobs, were then. these mm-hmm. we were a trillion dollar economy only kitna investment banking ho jayega when i was in bank of america i, I was actually getting calls from everyone okay. which i wanted to join before when i was in college yeah everyone called and i okay. said no i don't want to do this this is not what i'm made up of a new york offer was also made from bank of america that you can go there and join that team i said no i'm not going to do that i'm going to be working for india that's when i okay. said Okay, so which uh, you you then you joined Niti Aayog, I think. I joined the Planning Commission of India. Planning Commission of India. Okay, yes. <laughs> I think that story is. I worked with this gentleman known as Mr. Gajendra Haldia. So I was I used to work for I was a consultant in the high level committee on <clears throat> financing infrastructure. Uh, when I joined, it was chaired by Mr. Rakesh Mohan. Uh, people who know him, he's a phenomenal economist. C S E P now. Huh? He was the deputy governor. I don't know what he's doing now. Now, now I think he's owning the think tank CACP. Maybe I'm sure. So okay. he's a phenomenal uh, economist. He's yeah. deputy governor of RBI. He's been, you know, advises so many other people. And that committee had every big name of the financial sector at that point in time. Mm-hmm. It had Mr. Uday Kota, Chanda Kochar, uh, secretaries of all infrastructure ministries. there were guys from funds you know for the first, which whose name i didn't know actually so there was mr vikram gandhi on that thing who was in cppib and i didn't know what is cppib when i was 2010 11 said hmm. okay who so ever you are <laughs> as in, so there was this committee and hmm. i was the only consultant to it hmm. and i was observing hmm. what they were discussing hmm. so that's the opportunity which i got they were discussing things about india and how it's created and debates closed door debates and those are the, the best 
about you know why a particular thing was done in 1970 or why a particular thing yeah. was done in 1995 yeah so i my job was very simple right i used to i was to work on papers i used to create ideas to research and create ideas and write minutes and based on those minutes maybe write more papers but it gave me perspective it gave me india perspective and the bigger thing there was this gentleman known as mr gachendra haldia this guy uh, he was a gold medalist is officer did not become a secretary and he passed away last year he was advisor to mr montega alwalia on okay ppp and infrastructure so i was part of the ppp and infrastructure division got it and this is the man who wrote every document or i should say 90% of all documents on which india's infrastructure is based especially the ppp hmm. pieces and i got an opportunity to work with him to write a few lines to tell him a few words which then got captured and become became you know on the roads which we guys are driving right hmm. contract is very important in infrastructure you do you do, when you construct infrastructure the contract is for 30 years 15 years so you know i will how we say it is that you know if i allocated that project or i you know the i will not be there when the project will end the only thing which will remain or maybe even the the concessionaire or the private party who's doing it in the, in the second p public mm-hmm. private partnership even the, the the promoter may not be there he may sell the asset or he may is no more somebody else is there's another ceo So the only thing which is sacrosanct is the contract mm-hmm. and we used to create those contracts so we used to create model contracts so so which means we used to build business models and then based on those business model we used to build model contracts on which the ppps of this country will happen mm-hmm. so that's mm-hmm. what we used to do and a phenomenal absolutely phenomenal experience exposure yeah uh but i <laughs> but the exciting the most exciting part and mm. when i said i do da- drastic things it come you know one of the things happened there mm. when i joined planning commission i joined it at 40000 plus 2000 rupees uh, uh salary so 40000 was what people used to get and 2000 after 2000 1500 was for transportation 500 was for mobile phone this was multiple times less than what i was making at bank of america multiple Makes times sense. definitely so i despite coming from the background where i came in from repair shop you remember that right and obviously no financial background no estate transfers which were happening to us from either side of my me mom or dad my parents said if you like it do it he said my dad said i'm standing it's okay yeah, which is you know yeah, so you 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 follow your gut and i followed and they supported <laughs> that's so great so usually that won't you could happen. have like earned multiple when you you would have gone to new york but You left that offer, and you obsessed. Even Bank of America and Mumbai was paying me far more, or oh, even definitely, in, definitely. Yeah. But uh, but this was this was hap- this happened, and and I think I become him. I became professional. I became a different professional when I came out. Made great friends. Gave me India perspective. Now I, you know, this was the point in time in life, and I can tell you, I knew India better than most people, than any of. my age group or maybe even 5 years above definitely, and 5 years below definitely because you sit with those people you debate on that you have exactly. a conversation on that exactly so uh, after that i think you uh, so uh, then you starts your stint with invest india i worked f- a, for a little while with the, the shivnada university in noida yeah. in noida yes i was mm. uh, so the, 2014 was a bad time but i got a lot of offers i was surprised but i got married so i wanted something something comfortable also so yeah. a consulting offer knocking my door ready to pay a lot of money it was for implementation of one of some one of the largest telecom company in the country okay. right now <laughs> so those who we were talking about it those days but anyways so then i worked for them yeah. uh, i didn't like education honestly it is too slow for me yeah it's very slow <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, i worked for yes bank also very 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 small stint uh i i think i had a time timely exit also <laughs> so before the collapse yeah. so and then joined invest india so how did this invest india thing happen because this is very interesting because you were in the initial initial formative years of invest india yes i was i was like uh, the founding team absolutely yeah. so so before as an you know 
I think there is a lot of credit which goes to uh, the CEO, right? The, the Deepak Bagla. I think he is. A lot of people know him, right? Uh, he he created Invest India. So you know, it was his vision on how you know. It was brainchild of Amitabh Kant. I don't Sir. know whose brainchild it was. Okay. Right. So I won't get into that. It's the lot of stories which nobody has ever confirmed. Okay. Uh, I've seen the execution part of it, right? And you know, if I really go back to the time, you know, there was this. We used to, we we got some space in Fiki mm-hmm. to start with. So there was he had one room, which was like tiniest room possible, tiniest cabin possible. And then uh, we had one table. Okay. Right. So where we used to, maybe one to another small rooms, but. We were a team of you know by the time we all of us the first batch was hired we were hmm. like thirty forty people hmm. you know we and we were operating for one from one table which was smaller the size of this table which is in front of you and twenty people or maybe fifteen people sat all around it and that table used to do <laughs> so one person if stresses the other it'll it'll just stand up from there that was in West India. And and then and how did your offer came in? Like how did you hire? I was applying, right? Shivnadi okay. University was slow. I told you, I wanted to get out of it. Okay, so you were applying. I'm not okay. saying the university is not great. It's a most amazing place, right? It was not just for finance professional who's looking at volatility and planning commission of India. I was like, okay, now this you can't wait. I was applying. This just the interview call came a little later. Okay. For them, and then I applied and I got through. I was sure that I'll get through, honestly, because I knew India from planning commission. Got it, got it. Yeah. So, and and if you really think of my career at this stage, I've done banking, right? I've done education. I've done government. I had my own uh, coaching institute also. Yeah. I also did a failed startup in between. Let's okay. not talk about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so you have tried everything. I have tried everything, and uh, so Invest India happened. Let me tell you the Invest India, the most beautiful part in Invest India, which happened to me in the beginning. Okay. When I was there, you know, so. When when I was in Yes Bank, I'll not name the gentleman. He's a good friend of mine. Now he was my five or six levels above, hmm. maybe even ten levels above. Hmm. So he, so we, he and I, I all as in he and I had a love and hate relation. So we, so I left Invest India. He was good about. The, he never objected. Very nice person. So we, hmm. I went to Invest India. You know, one month into the job, or maybe one and a half month into the job, I was invited. For a Brahmaputra event in Guwahati in a cruise, okay, and I was the chief guest for that. So it was a session to speak for, and I was the chief guest. It's okay, I have to okay. speak for him. But that gentleman was also there, but he was the second speaker. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. And I think that's that's. So you know, I, I I my eyes opened actually. You know, this this place is putting me at a pedestal which probably I don't deserve, but I have to, I have to make. But it worthwhile. That's that actually changed in West India for me. I did some phenom. I I think what I could achieve here, I I wouldn't have achieved in ten lives, wow. seven and a half years. I, and I'm genuine. And you know, let me tell you some few a few few of those experiences. Yeah, few of them. Right. And and let me tell you some good things. And and then then there are some things which you know we work very hard to achieve. So. Uh, you know, I I I got to speak at events. So I, you know, I I went to Portugal, hmm. right? And you know, I, very interesting story. Uh, you'll be surprised <laughs> what happened. So I was talking to the ambassador of Portugal, Indian ambassador to Portugal, uh, and she had to, you know, tell the prime minister of Portugal on what are the opportunities to invest hmm. uh, in India for Portuguese companies. Hmm. So I was talking to her. I was explaining, ma'am, this is what it is. That is what. It is. And she said. You should come. I was like, ma'am, it's tomorrow. So what? You should come. Ma'am, visa cut up again. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> I went. I made a presentation to the Prime Minister of Portugal in his home with the entire industry of Portugal sitting in front of me in less than twenty hours. Okay. Does that happen anywhere? No. Does it? Doesn't happen. What a joy! And and you know that prime. I I remember. You know he's such an amazing man. He came to me. You know and he he told me Rahul, you have to do this. This is how you have to help us build the relationship. You have to got me this thing. You have to get me this, and you have to achieve this for me. 
this is the prime minister is telling me personally and i was like wow can that happen to anyone and i was 27 yeah so so that's what invest india could you know was was actually offering mm. uh and numerous such examples i i you know i i think today i'm 37 turning 37 in these you know or i must be 28 29 then so but in these 8 years i would have spoken in you know 300 events and you know i got so much respect for that but that didn't happen on its own it was a lot of hard work and lot of you know a lot about how you see india right we you know what deepak wanted us to be was you know fearless shameless bunch of people who will you know push around it's not easy right if you go to a it's event outside it wasn't easy you know especially back in 2016 right indians were not given that space right do yeah. you know today it has changed a lot in last 7 8 9 years and that respect has started to now come in but that was the objective which would was you know which we yeah, were working so, for so like you we, were the you were the you are people behind that we we ha- i don't know that right so, and i don't even want to claim that but wherever we will go we want to say that indians are at par with everyone else hmm. we will fight for it hmm. and if you're not respected it's not me getting disrespected it's india getting disrespected we have to create that respect for us hmm. you know we are where everyone else is there's no nobody who's large no, nobody who's big nobody who's small that's the attitude which we had to develop right we were talking to the and you know when you sit down with a ceo now a 55 57 year old ceo who has seen the world it's not easy to work to talk to him about his business he doesn't want to talk about talk about my business right i'm not i i'm a facilitator to bring that so i have to not only understand his business but also have to tell him the right points through which he can succeed in india and even the world and if i'm able to do that that's when he will connect with me you have to sell india story i have to sell first that i know hmm. he is his time is super expansive if i'm not able to sell me then i'll not be able to sell india so my first role was trust me i know it i may look very young right but i know right and from there to conversions and then you know i think a lot of the, those stories are i shouldn't talk about it this is not the platform uh but a lot of a huge number of success stories and one of them which i'm really proud about is the toll operate transfer uh of the first national highway roads hmm. so so first national highway so i we started working on 2016 and the idea of monetization and and now comes the point which you wanted to discuss the pension fund the sovereign mm-hmm. funds so they so india had a lot of assets right and and we didn't do well uh in monetizing them actually we didn't do well in attracting long term low cost capital into the country and uh, you know so, so monetization so we and and i went to so my job was to focus on funds i didn't talk about it was was to focus on funds and infrastructure to two specific things and because in high level committee in financing infrastructure and planning commission i understood the the importance of cost of capital for infrastructure the project is you know 30 50 100 years long sometimes the most important can you imagine can you know can you think about what will be the most important cost or which is the biggest cost in an infrastructure project if a project is 50 year long cost of debt interest yes absolutely kd it's not construction yeah it's not you know you may spend a billion dollars on it Mm. but after 50 years you have to pay back you have to pay so much interest on it <laughs> yeah that you know it look it's, it's just like buying your house right on yeah. emi yeah. what is the biggest thing you're paying interest same thing there so for me <coughs> reducing the cost of capital mm. is the f- most important thing. and no one talks about it you know even today i don't think people talk about that so for a nation if i'm if i'm able to reduce the cost of capital i'll be able to reduce the cost of infrastructure for my nation Hmm. how will that happen now that's the bigger question hmm. right everything in finance world is valued as present value of future cash flows hmm. right hmm. so you can do two things one you can increase the numerator which is cash flows 
second you can reduce the denominator which is the discount rate yes right how will that happen if people will start perceiving you less risky like you will have more credibility you will have absolutely so if you if people have to perceive you less to give you a small a, short, a smaller discount rate got it that was my job so i focused on that that i have to make the cost of infrastructure lowest by reducing the cost of capital mm. and that's how sovereign wealth funds and pension funds come into the play mm. right so that's what i've been working on the first toll operate transfer project happened uh we got involved in strategizing on it structuring it documentation contracts so as i told you i have to reduce the perception which means i have to give them so there is there's a concept in ppp that the party which is best positioned to handle a risk should be allocated that risk what does that mean hmm. a foreign fund coming out or even if it's a national fund cannot handle the risk coming out of inflation hmm. but can a government handle the risk of inflation yes hmm. so should we pass on the inflation risk to the private sector no no if we do they will take it but they will price the discount rate higher hmm. do i want that no no because in 50 years that's going to be very very painful for us so we need to create contracts which are balanced got it so that's what we got involved in tots hmm. and the next thing was marketing it and i i can pro- proudly say it, uh, and and i call it one of my achievements also uh, that i you know i i coined this vision that you know that we will make indian highways as a global asset class which means people from globe should see indian highways as an investable asset until okay. now there is no one or hardly any foreign fund and and if they've owned it they've repented it kyun le liya and this is what we started working on hmm. and it was all about pitching positioning answering right questions and making things the way even the globe doesn't do and that's what we did on technology on contracts on clauses and we went out and we teased that's another thing which we did you know so i had a very interesting conversation with the is officer let's not go to the names so we you know we, you know once i told him that you know you have to so you know when you how you sell you know this is this is the analogy which i gave and and my colleague very close to me you know he sometimes she sometimes laugh on me so i said sir when you sell meat right she sell shawarma right now shawarma is not but is, so you what do you do right you put the meat mm. uh then you you know you put the fire below and then you take a fan and you f- you know you do the you fan it around hmm. the smell goes everywhere and people come and buy meat hmm. that's how so he said okay so what do you think we are not putting the fan i said no you not even put the meat on the <laughs> the table <laughs> you know we got 500 million more than what we were expecting 500 million so uh, that was like a thorough satisfaction there are so many big funds did not participate because it thought it will be so cutthroat ki humko nahi milega hmm anyways so that's like you know one story and i i i honestly felt that you know this i could have achieved only at invest india and also felt very satisfied that this happened and you also mentioned one thing about the uh, during the time of covid the covid story yes so let's talk about that i have two interesting stories and uh, to share let me talk about or I, maybe even three i can share <laughs> or let's call it of two so there is covid one uh when happened you know when 23rd march or 21st march the lockdown was declared and i i sat home only for four days i was throughout on the road all the every day i was out so i as in and i used to sit in uh sit and support the procurement committee for you know masks ppe kits etc and then a few more things there but in <laughs> so actually you know in covid one i got you know so you know and yesterday itself you know when so i was actually talking about this concept of assumed power mm. so power is also about assumption how you assume it uh, in invest india I, i think i was a senior avp then honestly does not have any power right there's no power there's no signing authority there's nothing it's a private institution but if i assume my power right and i i have the right objective then what i can deliver is comparable to you know you can't compare it when i set up this so i i took some i had good networks in the industry because of working closely with a lot of them 
we set up this a whatsapp group of ceos of logistics companies and you know in a matter of you know when lockdown happened it was mayhem right we didn't know what nobody knew what hap- what to do ambulance ne move karte ye nahi kar sakte kisi ko kuch malum hi nahi hai and government was resolving it right they also didn't know how to react to it but before that had come in that whatsapp group started working and it was very exciting so we started getting requests so there are about 50s or maybe 100 ceos of all logistics company so it's you know so we like mask banwane hai jaldi so he said okay i you know i have these masks that hospital doesn't have masks i have pp kits that hospital doesn't have pp kits so he said okay we have something here in delhi somebody has to take it to guwahati so he said, this is is needed once you said okay see i can't go to guwahati right now i have this thing is functional only until calcutta second he said oh no no problem calcutta to guwahati i'll take it and suddenly this was a super success Hmm. and for one month that group did wonders because you know there were emergency situations hmm. you know important things stuck which we were okay wahan pe ye wahan pe ye wahan pe ye and suddenly pura group and and you know you you can't imagine because from groups groups were getting created hmm. so suddenly you know there's a something for east something for west something for north and we were started working together hmm. you know so that it was for me it was a phenomenal uh, achievement and then also a lot of ruthlessness uh you know was happening so i you know i was in part of the procurement committee and uh, i don't know if that story i can share or not but but i'll, I'll still say it so there was this uh, uh, there was a pp procurement which was, which what which had to happen and because i was so active then uh, so a order was placed any sort of sectors would you like to just india will gradually so so it's like it's, semiconductor deep tech infrastructure so i don't know sexy stuff too much so <laughs> <laughs> so semiconductor so deep tech i've been to taiwan a few times lately even the smallest of stuff will be very big you know in these hotels we are we are 1.5 billion people tourism industry in india will be so big mm-hmm. so crazy that you know you can make enormous amount of money healthcare you know we will need it financial sector right we are talking about 10 billion upi transactions a month hmm. right why can't india have 100 million hotel rooms being booked every month hmm. maybe even more i don't know it's such a small number maybe hmm. why not 1 billion hmm. or 1 billion times people eat at a you know at a restaurant now imagine the amount of value it creates so so even those basic things are going to become big so it depends how you pick it So it depends how which lens you pick that business from if you're investing and if you're working for it or trying to create it just think of that scale hmm got it got it and uh, if you are comfortable how you are looking your future now <laughs> in 5 years down the line, uh, down the line. because coming from now you have like <laughs> juggle with every everything no private sector public <laughs> sector everything correct in some way yes <laughs> yeah i want to be a spy actually <laughs> i actually told someone i know a spy a international <laughs> one i said you know if i do well i don't actually podcast is not a great idea to become a spy <laughs> <laughs> but but i said okay can i be a spy that's that's how drastic i want to be in 5 years 5 years that kind of time but i have, for now i want to invest in india's india's present i think this opportunity is not going to come you if you have the right eye for it if you can make meaning out of chaos that's that's the word which i love the most i can act beautifully well in chaos and in the gray two words i think i think if you can really do that whether you're a global investor or indian india is a place to be and has a place to be yeah. yes yeah i will you know people you know there is one everyone thinks about a number which they will retire for and you know there's so many so many influencers these days coming up with saying stupid stuff a lot of very relevant but a lot of stupid stuff as well you know think or gentlemen ladies and gentlemen that in you know when india becomes a uh, what 35 40 trillion economy the average average per capita income in india will be about 30000 Hmm. If you're a family of five, you'll need hundred and fifty thousand dollars on an average. Yeah. To run your home. Yeah. 
right? And fifty thousand dollars translates into, if you do today's numbers, one point two crore. Yeah. Now to generate one point two crore. Yeah. At a two percent interest rate, which is let's say assume Ch- will be like China, we should yeah. be even lower than that. Yeah. You will need how much money? So you will need about hundred and fifty crore. No, sorry, at three percent, about forty crore. So forty crore will generate one point two crore for you at at two. If it's two percent, then sixty crore. Yeah, sixty crore. Yeah. That's what you need to create to become average. Become average, yeah. <laughs> right per capita income, no? Yeah. So you don't retire with. Guys, this is. So you have to. You have to work hard. It's not about just, you know, <laughs> just about creating wealth. It's about making big, big become aspiration. You know, let's aspire to become big. Let's deliver what others have not delivered. We have to. We have. We have 1.5 billion people, most of whom are poor. We have to create this generation, this 20-year-old, this 10-year-old. Guys, it's great for them. They have to create for India mm. and the world. That should be the objective. Mm. They will be rich, and they'll be prosperous. Mm. But it's not only for them. It's for many more of us. That's great. That's great. Uh, thank you so much, Rahul. It was great to have a chat with you, and uh, all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much.